In this section, I'm going to discuss one of the short channel effects called drain induced barrier lowering. In short form, it is called Dibble. To understand Dibble, let me take a short channel MOSFET and compare that with a long channel MOSFET and show what happens because of this phenomenon in which I have shown energy band diagrams here under equilibrium for this MOSFET assuming channel length is short and here channel length is long the energy band diagram under equilibrium these energy band diagrams are near the silicon dioxide silicon interface including the source substrate and drain regions and of course so far we have taken that source and drain are grounded that's why we had this figure now under normal operation mode of MOSFET we would increase the drain potential higher than source let's say drain potential is increasing what would happen is the potential on this side if it is applied positive the energy band here would come down because we are applying positive potential it would come down and of course when we apply positive potential here this PN junction substrate to the N plus drain region would get reverse biased more and more the depletion region in this junction would increase into the substrate region in that case this transition region would increase and this energy band in the drain region would come down so let me draw that figure here this is how the energy band diagram would look as this junction is reverse biased the Fermi levels would split near the junction where the difference would be Q times VDS assuming that bulk and source are connected together and grounded. Now let's do the same thing on this side where it is short channel MOSFET. In this case when drain potential is increased this energy band near the drain would come down. When it comes down along with that the depletion region in the substrate near the drain would increase. Hence, we would get this slope, but if you see the effect of this bending is more relatively compared to this because the available channel length itself is small. Now, if we increase the drain potential even higher, let me draw what happens to this energy band diagram. So, the energy band diagram when VD is increased even beyond this point, the depletion region width even increases. To start with, under equilibrium when source, gate, drain and bulk were grounded, we had a clear barrier between source and drain. When we increased the drain potential, the energy band diagram went down at this side on drain, which had the slope because there was a depletion region extending into the bulk region. And if we increase even further, it tends to go to a point where even this barrier height has reduced which means the drain is controlling the barrier height here. That's why it is called drain induced barrier lowering. So the barrier has been lowered. In fact, if you observe, as we discussed throughout, that gate is the one which is supposed to control the barrier between source and drain. So that when potential is applied across drain and source, there would be current flow. Now, in this case, what's happening is the barrier is in fact controlled by drain just because the channel length is small. So how we define channel length was small? We defined it as if the channel length is comparable to the sum of the depletion regions on source plus the depletion region on the drain. In that case, when we apply potential, the barrier would reduce, which in turn would allow electrons to actually surmount the barrier. Okay and have a current flow which means in sub threshold we would have higher current flowing because of this drain induced barrier lowering whereas in long channel MOSFETs because the length is very high compared to the depletion width sums so it only keeps extending within the given operating voltages hence in long channel MOSFETs, we wouldn't see this barrier lowering because of the drain potential increase in the operating voltages. This phenomenon is called drain induced barrier lowering, where the barrier between the source and drain is lowered because of the potential applied at drain, which was in fact supposed to be controlled by gate. Now drain is doing that. So that is one of the short channel effects called Dibble, drain induced barrier lowering due to which sub-threshold current would increase.
In fact, there is an extension to this topic, drain induced barrier lowering, which is called the bulk punch through. So the question is, as we increase the drain potential, the barrier keeps decreasing. So if we keep increasing the drain potential even higher, what happens is the barrier potential even reduces, in which case the electron flow from source to drain would be uncontrolled, where the current flow would be really high. And in fact, we are not controlling the channel creation from gate here. We haven't touched the potential at gate. And yet there is a current flow which we call leakage current. And this leakage current would be very high. And the gate can no longer turn the device completely off and loses control of the drain current. This is one of the very important points where the entire bulk region has been punched through because the depletion region extension from the drain would reach and contact the source site, in which case there is no barrier between the source and drain. And of course, that barrier was not controlled by gate here. It was controlled by the drain, in which case the gate loses the control, which was supposed to be controlling the channel here. It happens in short channel MOSFETs.